Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing structural and globular proteins. Okay, so so far we've looked at the concept of the protein as a polymer of amino acids. Okay, so amino acid building blocks connecting together by peptide bonds to form a polymer or a polypeptide, the strands of which kind of fold together to form a protein for a particular um, particular function. We're now going to look at the fact that not all proteins in the human body are used for the same thing, but actually that then the structure of the protein has very much is very much linked to uh, what it is used for. And so we talk about these two different um, two different groups or, or types of proteins. Okay, so we talk about structural and globular. Proteins. I'm going to set up this kind of this sort of a table that we can use to compare them. Okay, so structural are also known as fibrous proteins. Okay, um, so being able to then um, so looking at um, yeah, so that ultimately it comes down to to their function. Okay, used. Um, for building body tissues. Um, so for example, this includes muscle, um, nails, like your finger and toenails, um, hair, um, skin, connective tissue, etc. Okay, so that's what it's used for. And that's going to then kind of follow on what, what, what we're going to see in a minute. Um, and whereas globular proteins, we're thinking um, in terms of enzymes. Okay, so enzymes are used for a whole range of chemical reactions, e.g. digestion. Um, so, okay, um, they also, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're also um, are used as hormones. Um, insulin, for example, is a type of globular protein. Okay, we'll look at some examples of each of these in a minute. Okay, so structural or fibrous um, proteins tend to be linear. Okay, they've got strong um, connections between chains. Okay, in the same way that we looked at um, the equivalent would be like cellulose as a glucose kind of polymer, that it's linear, you get strong connections between chains. Um, whereas um, when we're thinking about this, globular proteins, we're thinking that they are spherical or globe like in shape. Okay, um, structural proteins are insoluble in water. Whereas structural proteins are soluble in water. Okay, um, the insolubility of structural proteins comes down to the way that the chains kind of pack and connect together. Um, whereas then the solubility in water over here relates to size and also the presence of positive or minor, um, positively or negatively charged groups. On the outside of the chain, so kind of outside of the molecule, so that they kind of coat the outside or, or are oriented on towards the outside, which interact very effectively with water molecules and are surrounded by water molecules very, very well. Okay, so without the the reason that that we want um, that um, that it links back to their function is that globular proteins are small water soluble in acidic and basic solutions and they're very mobile okay they can move through the body's um, solutions very very simply um, whereas fibrous proteins or structural proteins are not able to do that but they what they do have is great strength okay the reason that we use them structurally is that they can they are tough and that they are able to connect together to make very strong networks that um, that, that give these tissues um, structural integrity. Okay, so you know you, you know as well as I do that your fingernails are quite a strong substance. Okay, the same um, 
the same protein that's used to build your hair and your um, fingernails is also used in the structure of say like a rhinoceros's horn okay and you can see that then when that gets packed together in that way that it's incredibly strong um, and in that situation very dangerous to other animals okay and so that they because of their linear we've got these strong connections that they pack really closely together they form really strong networks uh, whereas globular proteins are mobile they're easy to transport around the body um, and that means that they can interact with lots of body systems um, very effectively they can be moved around in the blood and so on okay so now I'm going to spend a little bit of time I'll just in blue list off a few examples of each um, so you can kind of be able to see some examples okay so we talked about the one that makes up um, so keratin which is what makes up the uh, hair and uh, fingernails we've got collagen most of the, the the protein in your body present in your body is collagen okay and so um, then we've got muscle fibers okay needless to say you want them to be strong okay that they they help to bear your weight and help you to move your muscles that those muscle fibers um, are, are structural proteins okay whereas ones that we've got over here so we've got um, various different um, enzymes usually you know we've got things like lactase or maltase that we use to process our food uh, we've got um, can you read it? Yes, you can. Hemoglobin. Okay, which is a combination of globin proteins and then a heme molecule, which is then used, um, so what, which is it was kind of connected to iron, which is used to then transport oxygen around the body. Um, myoglobin, which is the equivalent kind of that's present inside the muscle kind of tissue. Um, myoglobin is what gives, is responsible for giving red meat its characteristic red colour. It's not blood, but it's the, closely related myoglobin, uh, closely related to hemoglobin. Um, yep, so insulin we've already kind of mentioned as another example, glucagon, um, and further examples there. Okay, so you can see that depending on exactly how that protein is structured, how it is put together, that it has very different uses. We can use it to build strong tissues, um, or we can use them as small kind of transport um, mechanisms to to facilitate chemical reactions to move substances from point A to point B like oxygen okay to dissolve easily in and out of um, cells and other tissues um, to, to help move things around okay thanks very much for watching bye for now